Hello, my name is Jenny Brandt with Unleash Your God-Given Healing. And today I'd like to share with you eight things I wish I'd known before chemotherapy. Last week, I did release a video called The Six Things I Did Know Before Going Into Chemo that definitely enhanced my prognosis. But today I want to share with you the things I didn't know so that you may benefit. First of all, genomic testing was not invented until about a year after my cancer was diagnosed. But I do recommend that you push the button with your doctor to get genomic testing. Doctors will not offer it to you because it is not covered by insurance, but it's where they take your cancer cells, grow them in petri dishes, and try every chemical adjuvant on them to see which ones work the best. Let me explain why this is important. Today, cancer is treated by the type of cancer and the chemicals that have the highest percentage of working for that particular cancer. Now, that's a great improvement over years ago when everybody kind of got the same chemicals, whether they worked or not. But here's the problem. Our bodies are individual, and sometimes what might work 50 to 60% for most people doesn't work for you. It's best to find that out up front. This is an expensive test, ranging from five to $8,000, but ask your doctor about it. Be willing to pay out of pocket. It is worth it. And then if it ends up showing different chemicals than your doctor was going to use, you can then get your doctor and, and yourself to write a letter to your insurance company asking them to cover it because you've just saved them a lot of money and yourself from being poisoned twice to kill those cancer cells. Number two, I mentioned this in a previous video that I actually walked two miles before and two miles after each chemotherapy. That was my goal and I was able to do it for the entire year. But I did it to reduce stress and it did. But research would later show that it did so much more. 30 entities in Australia, as well as MD Anderson, would have the research that which now shows the best thing a cancer patient can do, especially going through chemotherapy, is to move every day. Move before chemo, move after chemo. You do what you can when you can. If you don't have the energy or balance, you may have to wait. But you do what you can when you can, and the benefits are so many definitely worth doing. This idea of having chemo and going home and lying down for several weeks is not the way to go. You can do better if you move. Number three, consider eating cancer-fighting foods throughout your chemotherapy treatments. Let me tell you some of the, let me tell you this first of all, every plant in God's kingdom has cancer fighting power. But there are some that are in the top ones, the highest. And the top one for cancer patients would be cruciferous vegetables. I eat one to two servings a day. I also eat blueberries, which are high on the list. They cut off the blood supply to cancer tumors. And broccoli sprouts are the most powerful cruciferous vegetable. So when you look at all the different plants that you could be eating, these are some of the best to make sure that you get in your diet. I also use two tablespoons of flaxseed daily. Helps you to metabolize the aggressive estrogens, which help to drive my cancer. Number four, 50 grams of fiber a day. Boy, we're sounding like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and Daniel in the book of Daniel. But research by MD Anderson is now showing that the best thing a chemotherapy patient can do is to eat 50 grams of fiber a day. It's gonna take a while to build up to that because we're used to a processed food diet, but it enhances the immunotherapy, which many people are on today along with the chemotherapy, and it also helps you to survive the chemotherapy. Now, along with this, 
The next one is six probiotic foods a day. From this same research from MD Anderson, what did they find? That six probiotic foods a day enhanced immunotherapy and helped you to survive chemotherapy. So these are important things to do. The next thing on my list is, hey, I just gotta be honest, less chemo is more beneficial. Anything you can do to allow your doctor to lower those toxic chemicals they're putting in your body because they get a better kill rate is going to benefit you greatly. For example, example, excuse me, Dr. Robert Elliott, who wrote parts of my book with me, an oncologist and major medical researcher, was known to say, and he told me directly, Jenny, cancer is a metabolic disease. Cancer cells crave high carbs, so don't give them high carbs. Eat a low carb diet, let your doctor know you're doing this, and see if they will reduce the chemicals they're putting in your body because they'll get a better kill rate. You weaken those cancer cells when you don't give them what they crave. Let's just be honest. The next thing on my list is intermittent fasting. What is this? It's when you simply wake up in the morning. Instead of eating breakfast, you choose to drink water instead. If you can do intermittent fasting during the day of chemotherapy, it allows those chemicals to go more to the unhealthy cells than the healthy cells. Now, there's this thing that God created in your body, one of many miraculous mechanisms called autophagy. And autophagy is where your body removes and rebuilds damaged cells. Well, cancer cells are damaged cells. So look at it this way. If you can not eat and water fast during, during chemotherapy, again, you are extending that autophagy. So while your doctor is killing your cancer cells from the outside in, you're doing it through God's own given mechanisms from the inside out. Now I've got to give a caution on this. I simply can't recommend this to cancer patients that are already emaciated from previous chemo. If you don't have a healthy weight on your body where you can afford to go without a, a meal or two to get through the chemotherapy, then this is not recommended for you. But I do recommend intermittent fasting during chemotherapy for those patients who feel they can do it and have enough weight to do it. The last one, number eight, is simply reduce your toxic load. Here you are facing chemotherapy where all these toxins are gonna be put into your body to kill a greater enemy, cancer, but you wanna do everything you can to reduce the normal toxins that are getting into your body so that your body is not overloaded with toxins. How do you do that? Drink filtered water. Stop putting all these creams and lotions and cosmetics on your body and your hair that contain all these chemicals. So look at ways to reduce your toxic load, keeping in mind that hydration and movement help you pump that lymphatic system to reduce that toxic load too. I hope that this has been beneficial for you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video and share it with those you know who are facing chemotherapy. Under the three dots, if you will click that and then push the button to be notified when I make a new video, then you won't miss some very important videos. I pray these things will help you to do better during chemotherapy. May this unleash your God-given healing in your body. Thanks and God bless.